what makes magic so intriguing? Because when you think about it, it's just deceiving and lying and tricking people. So why do millions of people every year pay good money to go see magic shows? Well, it's the same reason we like to go to the theater, right? Or we like to go to a movie. We want to be amazed. We want to be entertained. We want to see the impossible brought to life right before our eyes. Because when that magician is on stage, when he has that deck of cards in his hand and he's entertaining you, you don't care if it's fake or if it's real or if it's true or if it's lies, as long as you are captivated. But of course, the second that trick is over, the magician takes his bow, he exits the stage, and the first question in your mind will always be, how did he do that? It's this unscratchable itch in the back of our minds. It's this maddening voice that we cannot seem to answer. How did he do that? My name is Michael, I'm a magician, and I'm going to try to answer that question for you all here today. Now, I hate to be the guy to break this to you, but magic isn't real. It's all fake, it's all lies. But we all know that, and that's what makes a magician's job so impossible, because we take a room full of people, people who all know magic isn't real, and convince them otherwise. And we do a pretty good job at it. But how? How do magicians fool us? Well, when broken down, it's really simple. Magicians use three tricks, three tools to lie to you, to deceive you, to mess with your mind. First, and most obviously, like I said, we will lie to you. Second, we will distract you. And third, we will always be planning ahead. Now, let's start with the lies magicians tell, because as everyone knows, no magician is honest just a bunch of liars. That's the entire profession. You cannot trust a word that comes out of our mouths. But ironically enough, always being surrounded by lies makes you develop certain skills when it comes to discerning if other people are lying. Now, that sounds kind of weird, excuse me, so I want to try to explain that better with a demonstration, a, a magic trick, a card trick, if you will. So I actually need help from someone in the audience. So uh, if I would, any volunteers, could you please raise your hand? Uh, raise it high, too, because there's a light in my eye and I can't see a thing. So I'm just gonna come out here. Anyone like to help me? Just really quick. Anyone? Oh, yeah, sir, would you like to come on stage? Yeah, just come on. Thank you so much. Uh, what is your name? Uh, Max. Max? Yeah. Oh, nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna do a really basic card trick, okay? I want you to first verify that all these cards are different. Okay? okay? Right? Now, I am going to ripple down the side like this. Whenever you want, somewhere in the middle here, just say stop. And then I show you that card, you memorize it. Visualize it in your mind, and I'm gonna see if I can try to figure out what it is, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna shuffle the cards first. Okay, you ready? Okay. So just tell me when to stop. Go. You sure? Okay. Take a look at that, please. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll just set that, sorry, excuse me. Set that right over here. Now, I want you to clear your mind, okay? Just visualize the card. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, eight, no, none of those. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, no. Uh, jack, queen, king, jack, queen, king, jack. You see, his eyes are twitching a bit there, so I want to say it's a jack, am I correct? Okay, good. Uh, Clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts, clubs, hearts, hearts. Is it a jack of hearts? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You can be seated. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, that's a relatively interesting trick, and it's a cool example of the abilities to discern if someone's lying or telling the truth. And the reason I did it was because it seems very logical. It makes sense that a, you know, a person who lies a lot would be able to tell if someone else is lying. But I can't. I genuinely had no idea what his facial movements meant. I just forced him to pick that card. I lied to you. 
I told you that I was going to try to read his mind. That's a, a load of baloney. <laughs> I did something called a card force. Now, I won't go into too much detail, but I pretty much just held my pinky in the back like this. And wherever he said stop, it didn't matter. I always just pulled from that same spot and showed him the card, a card that I already knew what it was going to be. So there was no real discernment. There was no real psychic abilities or eye twitches or anything. It was just a lie. Magicians lie like this because it takes the attention away from the deck of cards. It makes you look at me. It makes you think about my abilities, not what's going on right here. All magicians are liars. Do not trust the word that comes out of our mouths. But what about distractions magicians use, right? Because a magic show is full of distractions, right? If I asked you all to think of them, you could probably think about maybe the weird top hats magicians always wear, or how about like the magic wands, right? The, such cliche objects. But what about the words, the questions magicians ask? Because if I was trying to really distract you, I would just ask you a question. If I'm doing a card trick for you, and you're looking right here at this deck of cards, and I need to do some kind of secret move, and I don't want you to see that, then I ask you a question. Because although your eyes are right here, if I say, oh, well, what's your name? Or are you enjoying the show? Or just any simple pleasantry, your eyes will immediately go from here to here. And you'll answer my question. Because we have been programmed that when someone is talking to us, we make eye contact with them and we listen to what they have to say. And in that split second, that just minuscule amount of time where you look up, I've already done whatever I need to do. And you're none the wiser. But sometimes there's more elaborate things that magicians need to do. Sometimes it's more obvious motions, right? Sometimes we need to uh, make something appear from across the room. Or, I don't know, sometimes we have to, <coughs> sorry, that was weird. Uh, sometimes we have to cough to disguise the fact that we pulled like a large yellow ball out of our pockets, right? It's just simple, obvious distractions, right? Now, I'd be willing to bet that the majority of you didn't notice that. Maybe some of you did. Maybe some of you keen-eyed folks out there. And, you know, if you did, congratulations, because something like that isn't easy. It's not easy to discern what's going on. Also, it's very angrily, too. People over here might see something going on, but people over here might not. It's all about distractions. For example, where I'm distracting you, talking to you about this yellow ball, talking about distractions, I turn the deck blue. Pretty simple trick, right? But hopefully, hopefully, if a magician's doing well, the majority of people's focus is not going to be here, it's going to be here. By the way, for those of you who were paying attention, and maybe for those who weren't, this is just a double-backed card. It's really simple. I just pulled it out of my pocket, right? It's simple stuff like this. It's just simple distractions. We're just trying to trick you. So that's pretty simple, right? It's just lies and distractions. But what about planning ahead? What about the things magicians do, the, the, the time-saving efforts we make to know all possible options of a show? Because I spent weeks, if not months, preparing just for this, something as simple as a talk, where I'm barely doing any magic at all. Because I need to know every possible thing that could happen, everything that will happen. Now, once again, I'm doing, do, going to do a really quick demonstration. Now, I won't be bringing anyone on stage for this, but I want you all to close your eyes really quickly. And I want you to visualize a playing card. Now, think of that card that popped in your mind right there when I ask you to visualize a playing card. Okay, you have it in your mind. Now, if I was to ask this entire room, at same question, if I was to ask personally, you, 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 what card did you think of? You're all gonna have different examples, or different guesses. For example, uh, sorry, it's hard for me to see, but uh, anyone, yeah, just someone in the audience, tell me what card you picked. Uh, <laughs> okay, that was a wild guess. Which one do we wanna go to? I heard three of clubs, three of hearts, uh, ace of spades. Which one do you guys wanna go with? Hmm? Ace of spades, okay. Now, here's the thing. There's no way I could have known what that card was, right? Like, you bunch set up different things. And I think the man out there, he really adamantly wanted that ace of spades. Good for him, right? And I, obviously, I didn't talk to that person before the show. I didn't meet them. I didn't no idea who they were. But before the show began, I had a prediction. And I wrote down, up here on my arm, ace of spades, right? Now, that's kind of a funny little gag. It's kind of a cool thing. But it's really not that amazing, right? Because if you think about it, oh, he could be in on it. But he wasn't. So how did I know, right? You could be thinking to yourself, oh, well, ace of spades is a really common guess, right? There's a good chance that someone picked it. But what if they hadn't? What if no one had said ace of spades? What if I had to go with three of clubs, three of hearts? What would I have done? Well, it's really simple. I just know the statistics. 
there's actually a 25% chance, a one in four chance, that if I asked any person that question, visualize a playing card, you're going to think of the ace of spades. So I had a one in four chance that if I put this on my arm, it's gonna end up being correct. But that's not really good odds, right? One in four, that's, that's not preferred. So I take more extreme steps. Uh, what if I had another prediction? What if I had the next likeliest option, which for your information happens to be the queen of hearts? There's a 14% chance you thought of the queen of hearts. Well, I would have maybe, I don't know, written queen of hearts on my leg down here. But what about the next common option? Um, actually, when I ask you to visualize a playing card, there's an 11% chance you would have picked, oh, I don't know, the eights of hearts. Huh. And then there's actually a 6% chance you would have picked the uh, king of hearts. <laughs> now, I just covered the four most likely options. But what if someone picks something that I haven't prepared for? What if I don't have a prediction for the three of diamonds, three of clubs? Well, that's fine because I'll just do a completely different trick. Maybe that person yelled out three of diamonds, I'll say, oh, okay, so uh, sir, ma'am, whoever yelled out three of diamonds, come on stage, I'm gonna give you the deck, I want you to pull out the three of diamonds, and I want you to, oh, I don't know, sign your name on it, and then I just do a completely unrelated trick. The audience had no idea what to expect. They didn't know I was going to be doing a prediction routine. They just know I'm doing a trick. When I plan ahead, and I know all possibilities, I can go in any possible direction with my show, and the audience has no idea. I am in complete control. So that's it. That's the three ways magicians fool us. And they're really simple. It's lies, distractions, and planning ahead. If I'd asked you, everyone in this room, to think of that, you probably could have come up with those three. It's stuff that we know exists. Like I said, some of you may have actually noticed when I pulled that ball out of my pocket or when that deck turned blue. Some of you might have picked up on that, but most of you didn't. Why? Well, you're just not looking out for it enough. And maybe now you will. But to conclude, I wanna say something because I haven't been completely honest with you once again. There's actually a fourth way magicians will trick us. A fourth way magicians will fool us. And it's actually the most secret way of all. And it sounds kind of cliche, but it's just confidence. It's just being able to walk up on a stage and assume this persona, assume this ability that yes, oh, I am a magician, I can do card tricks, I can go on a TEDx talk, I can do that. Because deep down, I'm just a 19 year old freshman in college, I'm shaking right now, I am terrified that I'm going to mess up, I'm going to say my lines wrong, I'm gonna cough, my stomach is doing somersaults, I'm scared. But no one wants to see a 19 year old kid on stage ranting about how scared he is, they wanna see something entertaining, they wanna see a magician talking about things. So I'm confident and I believe in my abilities. And that's all. You just gotta know that you can do what you say you can do. Because it's not how good a magic trick is that makes someone love magic. It's not how amazingly impossible a trick was. It's the quality of the magician. It's the audience's relationship with the magician that makes people love magic.